Hi, welcome back to Court's Country. We are now on episode three. Oh my goodness, can y'all believe it? Third episode. Um, how have you liked the previous episode so far? We've already had a special guest, my friend Bree. Um, then the first episode was just me, and now you're back stuck with just me. How do you feel? Leave me a review on Spotify, Apple, comment below on YouTube, because, like, you guys can see me and interact with me now. Um, and all of the things. Share us on Instagram. Follow us on Instagram if you haven't already. Subscribe to the YouTube. All of those great things. But ultimately, welcome back to Court's Country. Um, this episode is, um... Let me grab my notes, praise God. This episode, I think, can honestly kind of be described as like a part two for episode one, if we want to be like completely honest. It's like a sub topic. Um, And it's my realization of me almost settling for a life. I literally had that realization, um, man, maybe about a month or two ago. It paused and like all of these scenes started rushing through my head of like, I got to where I was um but it sparked because I had seen a picture of a a particular person and um they remind it reminded me of the life that I had just stepped out of like a year ago and um I was like oh wow like I really was about to dive deep into this style of life not saying anything is wrong with it just it was not what God had for me and I was really about to like get in that thing I was about to marry into that thing and I mean it's just crazy um and so like I just I felt like it was there was a need for us to talk about this I think a lot of us have moments where either we're in a life right now and we've already settled and you know you start kind of thinking like uh is there life out there that's a song by Reba McIntyre if you guys wanted to know um and it's a movie that she stars in anyways hubby so ever um but like you start thinking is there life out there or like you're maybe like me and you've started already kind of going back to the drawing board and making sure that you're on track with God and um the question still is is there life out there but have I done it the way God has intended me to do it am I settling and if I am why am I um so I want to share a little story when I was in college um I had a professor pull me to the side I think it was my senior year or it might have been the last semester of my junior year it it, it was somewhere in there and um he was an adjutant professor at that and uh he pulled me to the side and he he just told me like what I was doing was a cop-out and at the time I had been assaulted like I think right before my junior year started, it was my junior year, I was 20, um, I was assaulted and the side of my face was like marred and so I was a theater student and I didn't want to be seen, like I did not want to be seen so and it happened literally in August, like a week before school classes started so you know we were gonna start having auditions and doing all of the things so I said I'm just gonna be behind the scenes I'm just going to um be a stage manager so I got into all of those things I got into production I got into stage management I got into lighting and sound and just all of the things that happen where it's like you're the person that like nobody knows your name I was the person at the end of the movie where you see scroll and black and white, right? Um, and I found I loved it. I still love it to this day. I found an, a knack for it. I found that I had a natural talent for it. Um, but I, I did it simply because I was trying to hide myself because of this moment that had happened in my life. Um, and I didn't realize how I had gotten stuck there. Um, I kind of have struggled with this... I guess to say this feeling and this need to kind of want to push myself out there and want to, um, you know, want to do something bigger, want to do something great in life. And I've 
I've faced adversity. I've lost friends. I, you know, my circle is very small. It's okay that it's small, you know, but um, quite often, like, I feel like my desire to want to be great has led to the diminishing of many relationships that I've had from familial relationships to platonic relationships to romantic relationships. Um, and I think that could be an episode all on its own. You know, um, it's hard being in a relationship with someone that wants so much. That's a dreamer. That is, you know, they strive for things. And not only do they talk about the things that they want to do, but they're actually going out there and, and going and getting it. Um, I guess I'll just be so transparent and honest. Even my desire to do great things and to be out there and to be even just like I've always loved fashion so to be fashionable and to wear makeup and to have my hair look cute and all of those things like it has almost like caused a divide that's one of the things that caused a divide in the relationship with me and my sister many people don't know that I have an older sister um we're a little under a year apart and um that was something that she told me she told me that you know I was the root of all of her insecurities and that she felt like growing up, um, she felt like we were, that she was in competition with me growing up. Of course, I like let her know, like I had no idea that this was like, you know, the narrative that was playing in her head. Um, And it did quite shock me. So I've had several moments in life where um I pause and I'm like, okay, well, is it me? Like, should I not go so hard to be so out there in people's faces because some people can't handle it? You've a a relationship that I deeply valued above anything. You know, my relationship with my sister is now, you know, in limbo because she felt like she's been in competition with me. How did I attribute, how did I contribute to her feeling that way? Is it simply just because I was being me? And so it's just always been that for me. So once I was assaulted, it gave me a cop out. It, it honestly gave me um, an excuse to say, I'm going to go step over here. It was the icing on the cake. It wasn't the seed. The seed was already planted. You know what I mean? Um And so when my professor told me that, I did not want to hear it, okay? I was like, uh, you don't know what you're talking about. Like, I'm going to sit here and listen to you and respect you because you're my elder. But, like, best believe, once I got out of class, I went and hit up my homegirl and was like, uh, can you believe that Mr. Such and Such said da-da-da-da-da? And now, two months ago, after seeing the picture, those words replayed in my head. And I was like, oh. Mr. Such and Such was right. And it sucks (laughs) for the one person you really wanted to be wrong to walk down this whole path and then stop at the end of it and then look and be like, they were right. Oh, my God, this person was right. And so here I am now trying to pick up the pieces. I don't think any time was lost. I think the path that I am taking and have taken there, there was so many fundamental lessons that I learned. And even to this point right here, I wouldn't be able to sit here and speak on this for you to gain knowledge or for you to um, know that you're not the only one feeling a certain kind of way. You know what I mean? Um, Had I not have walked the path that I did walk. So nothing's done in vain. All things work together for the good of those who love him, right? I love him. So he, as long as I, even when I go off track, man, I don't want to preach right now, but I just feel that like, even when I go off track and it don't matter how far I go, I can go all the way left and he was meaning for me to go right. But even in my all the way left season, when I take the moment to pause and say, "Okay, God, I can't do this by myself anymore. Okay, I'm out here tripping. I don't know what's going on. I need your help. He's going to direct me back over here to the right. And I'm going to learn these lessons. And in the first episode, we talked about that. The bought lesson versus the taught lesson. I think bought lessons are so valuable because you gain some great personal wisdom that you can share about your life as opposed to, you know, 
being taught something um and anytime some anytime something is made personal it has so much more of an impact on you on the way you share it with the world um on the way people receive it because it's coming from a place that is personal um so yeah I almost settled for a life uh and I didn't realize it I I don't know like I probably could almost settle for a couple of lives, but I definitely almost settled for a life in the background when God called me to be a mouthpiece for him in this time and to do it my way. Um, I made a post about that on Instagram not too long ago about wanting to be the difference. Um, And I think also that can go into us settling sometimes because Because Beyonce is Beyonce, right? And then there's Chloe Bailey, and then there's Kelly Rowland, and there's Sierra, and there's God knows who else, you know? They've already established this superstar agenda, right? They sing and they dance on stage, they sell albums, they do tours, they do all of these things. And so it's easy to say, well, I want to be a singer and I'll just take what Beyonce did or what Sierra has done and I'll go and do the same thing. I'll get a record deal. I'll do rehearsals. I will uh, release a single. I will do all of these things. And you do things the same way they did it because your goal essentially is the same. I want to sell albums. I want to be a superstar. And oftentimes we can settle into a life that God did not ordain for us because we do it the way we just replicate what's already been done. Just because it's already been done does not mean it has to be done the same way. We're ever evolving. And it takes me back to Jesus when he tells us that we will go and do greater works than him. Jesus had a mind on what was to come always from the moment he was here. He knew that there was a greater moment that was coming, right? Even when he told his mama, why are you looking at me? He nine years old. Why are you looking for me? I'm out here doing my father's business. And I bet Mary was like, if you don't get your little narrow behind over here, you know what I'm saying? But Jesus always had in mind that there was a future. And so even after he had completed what he was, you know, created to do as far as, you know, bearing our sins and dying on the cross and being resurrected. And then he comes back and tells us, you're going to do greater works than these. There's a, than I did, you know, there's a future mindset. So the goal is still to be like Jesus right to save souls to win souls for Christ but the method is going to be different it's going to be greater it has to be greater you want to know why because Jesus said it would be so you want to be Beyonce okay the goal is the same sell records make music be a superstar the way you do it it's got to be greater than Beyonce why would you replicate what Beyonce did Why don't you go and do like take what Beyonce did and build like that's the whole point of like when we like the big thing now, especially is like I want to create generational wealth. I want to I want to break generational curses. Well, how do we do that? We have to set a standard in order for something to be broken. You set the standard and then from there, the next person behind you comes and they build something on top of that. And then eventually you keep building on top, on top, on top that that thing at the bottom is, is it no longer exists. It's not there anymore. We're so far removed from it. It's not a thing. I drive Uber, right? I love it because I get to meet some amazing people I met this little old lady her name is Maria she's from America but she grew up in Puerto Rico Um, her parents I guess were like missionaries or something they sent her to Puerto Rico but you know just a sidebar on like her and I were talking about the way of the world and how she had a she's you know a white American woman older lady but um she had a culture shock and when she grew up and got old and came to the U.S. and realized that segregation was a thing and she was like I mean we heard about it on on TV in Puerto Rico but like you know you don't know that something is real until you see it and she said I think that we won't change until we are like 
I mean so many generations far removed from it. We're not even far removed enough from it now because the people that were enacting these rules and regulations are still living. You know what I'm saying? And they've birthed people and put those things into their mind. So like back to that, that standard of like, you take what Beyonce did and build on top of it. So you take what Martin Luther King Jr. did and build on top of it. Not do the same thing because then that's how we're all running in a circle. And what did Jonathan uh, McReynolds tell us? I don't want to go in cycles. I don't want to go in cycles because we keep doing the same thing. Life should look like this, not like this you know some people would argue and say no I think like life is a cycle there are things we go through ebbs and flows but it should be a straight line of a journey to somewhere not I went here and then I came back here like then there's no purpose and so that's what I had to start telling myself is like okay the goal can be the same the path does not have to look the same just because Sarah Jakes Roberts is throwing conferences, Courtney, that doesn't mean you have to throw a conference. <laughs> I attended a Sarah Jakes Roberts conference. I had a blast, a great time. Is Courtney and Set Apart Ministries and all of the things that I do on Instagram supposed to be what Sarah Jakes Roberts is doing? Absolutely not. What she is doing is her lane and it's beautiful. I am absolutely inspired by her journey and there are things that I'm going to be like man you did that right you did that great but I want to build on top of that how can we go even higher because as technology advances as the world advances do you know that now um most major countries in the United States ciao I meant companies not countries but anyways, back to our regularly scheduled programming. ...are taking away the requirement to have a bachelor's degree for most job positions in major corporations. That tells you that human beings are getting smarter. We don't need <laughs> degrees anymore to do jobs because we have Google. There is literally knowledge sitting at our fingertips. And so that lets me know... That when Jesus said, you'll go and do greater works than I, Jesus had to travel on foot. I don't have to do that anymore. I can post a 30 second clip on Instagram and reach millions of people. Like the goal can be the same. The method does not have to be. And don't settle your life because you're trying to follow somebody else's blueprint. Inevitably, we're all going to kind of cross paths and do things that are similar to something somebody already did. That's just the way of the world, right? We have our set things that we do. You want to be a fireman? There's been thousands of them before you. You want to be a singer? There's thousands of them before you. An actress, a podcaster, a radio host, a whatever. You want to be a mother? There's millions of mothers that have been mothers before you. Does it mean that you're going to have to mother the exact same way that you mothered? Absolutely not. Because how many of us can raise our hands, especially women, and say, I'm not going to raise my kids exactly the way my mother raised me? Yeah, moment of silence for that. So don't settle and that's what I found myself doing. I found myself looking at, okay, this person did it this way. This person did it this way. And see, this is how I tricked myself, right? Because I had so many people that I looked up to. Like, I was like, oh, she does this, and then she does this, and then she does this. So if I, like, just pull pieces from each of these people and create this own little, like, dynamic, and this is the Courtney way, then I thought I was doing okay. But no, like, still, though, if such and such preaches and has a clothing line you can do it too you don't have to do it the same way such and such has a clothing line that's only for church clothes okay Courtney do you wear three-piece suits no so why would you go and think because I want to preach and spread the gospel my clothing line has to be church clothes or what we've ordained to be church clothes no you rock out in sweats and tank tops. 
99% of the day. <laughs> like, no, that's what you put on to feel good in and to be cute in. Um, somebody else has a podcast that's geared towards Christianity and they're, you know, uh, some mega pastor and I want to be a mega pastor. I got to make a podcast that's just geared towards Christianity. No, we need our people in every arena. Don't box yourself in anywhere because you're trying to follow somebody else's blueprint. Um, and there's a scripture, of course, you know, I'm throwing that in there because I still love God. God is just mm -mm good. OK, um, Romans 8 and 32 is what I looked up and boy, did it bless me. And I'm reading out of the NIV version. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? So that just leads me to know that whatever I ask, no matter how absurd it might be, no matter how off the path that somebody else has set, it might go. How can I not attain it? How can I not achieve it? If God literally sacrificed his own son, nothing else is off limits. There's no, it can't be off limits. Like, ask for the thing that you want. Don't keep yourself boxed in. Don't do what somebody else is doing. Because my first question to you is, like the other night, someone said, oh, I want to create this thing that does this. Well, you know there's this that already exists out there, so why would I use your product? Why would I listen to you if Ja'Kalen Carr already exists? And you dress like her, you sing like her, you do everything like her. If Ja'Kalen Carr is already there, then why would I listen to you? If Beyonce has already done all of the things, why would I listen to you? Find your white space. You can do the same thing, just do it your way. And that is where I have been in life. And it is so liberating because you want to know what, what happens is I had to trust myself. I had to begin to trust me, who God made me to be. And the moment I trust myself is the moment I decide to start trusting God because he's in me. And I think oftentimes we don't trust ourselves. We don't trust the ability that God gave us all on our own. And that's why it's easier to say, well, I want to do this, but I'm going to go follow this person. And I'm going to do it the way that they did it. I think mentorship is a beautiful thing. I still would love to have one. I haven't gotten the, the ability to get one just yet. Okay. Um, but also. Just know that a mentor there is to help guide you. They're not there to tell you exactly what to do A to Z. Because now you, they're creating a robot. They're creating somebody to do exactly what they've done. And that is not what God has called any of us to do. None of us are exactly like our parents. You know, if you've had the ability to have, you know, your birth parents that you grew up with and you were around, there's things that remind me of my mother. There are things that remind me of my father. But am I exactly like them? Absolutely not. If God, we know God don't, doesn't want robots because he even allows it genetically where um, twins, identical twins can be born. Literally, genetically, they are the same person literally if one goes and commits a crime and the description is tall blonde hair blue eyes button nose and he gets out free and goes to mexico but 
the other twin is still here and they're looking for him and they find him guess what his dna his fingerprints he could go down for what his brother did but guess what they have two different personalities genetically they are completely the same person but spiritually they are not soul wise they are not And I I don't know, like, I just want, I want so many other people to realize that it is okay to have a mentor, to want to follow in a path that someone else has kind of charted out, right? It kind of makes the journey a little bit easier. Um, But I think the beauty and the glory in the journey is having your own mess ups and mistakes and flops and whatever, You know, um, like I said in the beginning, those are the things that makes the journey personal to you. And that's what made me also pause and realize I am walking out this journey and I don't feel it in my soul or in my heart personally because I've been copying somebody else's map. If Jesus said you'll do greater works than I, Then Paul came and he did greater works than Jesus. Then after Paul, some more people came. We had John with revelations and he did a little bit more than Paul. And now we're all the way into the 21st century. Don't you think you would do a little bit more than such and such? So go for it. Achieve the goals, no matter how crazy it might sound. That is something that I am like, I have to continue to repeat in my head over and over and over and over and over again. Go for it. Go for it. Go for it. But have that moment to pause. Take the moment to pause and actually do the self-assessment and say, who am I and how did I get here? Because I had to do that. And it's a scary place to be in. It really is. Because now you have to face the truth and the reality of who you really are. And that, like well, like I said, you got to trust yourself. Trust your creativity. Trust your heart. Trust your passion. Trust the ideas that you come up with. Trust it all. Do it. If you want to throw a conference like... Billy Graham, that's old, but if you want to throw a conference like Billy Graham, go for it. But what is something that Billy Graham didn't do when he was throwing his conferences? Find the thing that makes it you. That's literally what I did with this podcast. I started a podcast, I'll say, I really feel like I was rushed into it. I was taking my time, um, but I felt like uh, that's, that's another thing. Be careful who your accountability partners are. Because they got to be moving with the Holy Ghost to hold you accountable, if that makes sense. Um, Because sometimes people will push you into something before it's time for you to do it. And then you just got a whole mess. And so my last podcast, The Society, I pushed, I had some people in my back that was pushing me. And then I just went ahead and pushed myself. And, you know, I won't blame them because I ultimately made the decision to go ahead and say, this is what I'm going to do. But. Um, I went ahead and started this podcast and I did it the way I thought other people did it. And this was what was what people wanted to hear. And this is how I was going to run it. And that's why it wasn't produced the way that it could have been to the maximum potential of what it is. And that's why it stopped. It literally halted because my heart was not in it. I remember my last day of recording, um, I ended up doing three episodes back to back and I was exhausted. I was so drained. I was so drained. And yeah, that that's a lot of work, right? You're doing almost an hour long, conver- three hour long conversations back to back to back with people diving into who they are, trying to figure out their story. It was a lot. But the reason, th- but the, the tiredness was something different. I was exhausted. I wasn't tired. I was exhausted. That day felt like a job. 
It felt like I was going to work. It didn't feel like I was doing my passion, something that I wanted to do. And so that's when I had to take a moment and say, okay, what are we doing? And I had people DMing me like, when are, when are you dropping another episode? When are you coming back? And I wanted to be like, I'll be back. I'll be back. But I even I, I even had to pause myself and not allow myself to allow them to push me back into something that had no heart, had no soul into it. And that was what I had to pause and say, I don't want to do anything else in my life, God. If it's not ordained by you and it's not fueled by the heart posture that I have and the passion that you put into me before you formed me in my mother's womb. I don't want to do it. Don't want to do it at all. So don't settle. Whatever it is, don't settle. And I think that that kind of is a great point of view that we don't often look at because we think settling is, you know, I'll stay with a man even though he cheats, but he pay all my bills. You know, like even beyond that kind of thing or settling for a mediocre life. Like don't settle for somebody else's life. Don't settle for the way somebody else decided to do something. That was the worst decision I could have ever made. Um, I can say that I probably wasted time, but nothing is wasted in the kingdom of God. So I will also say that I learned valuable lessons. And so now I'm able to sit here and say, hey, don't do what I did. <laughs> um, but keep going. I think what I want people to really learn from this and even for myself, this is a topic that I'm still exploring, that I'm still learning. But, you know, the, the ultimate thing is to trust yourself. Trust you. Trust you. I can't, I mean, I can't express that enough to trust you. When you begin to start trusting you, who God created you to be, you'll walk in any room and you'll conquer. There's no way you won't because you'll be so comfortable when you walk in to whatever the next is for God. And whenever someone tries to tell you, well, maybe you should do this, then you won't second guess yourself because you have full trust in who God created you to be. The worst thing I could have ever done, I'll never forget this conversation. It is literally embedded in the recesses of my mind. I um got hired as for um I got hired as a personal assistant for an artist. And um at the time I was working at a small label and I had started recording some music of my own, right? I'd gotten the confidence to finally start writing and recording and I was in the studio. And I was cranking out songs legitimately probably every week. And I was going to my boss like, hey, can you listen to this? Hey, can you listen to that? I was in the studio for myself till 3, 4 a.m. working on stuff with um, a producer, right? And I got that job and I thought this is going to be great because I'm going to learn from this person and what they're doing because they're doing it kingdom. Um, And someone that... They knew, called me, um, and they were congratulating me. And they said, congratulations. And I had actually, I was already friends with this person as well. And I had sent them a recording, um, a rough cut of a song that I was actively recording at the time. And he was like, oh, I listened to your song and... um, it was good. You know, you were really great. Gave me all of these accolades. And then he said, but um, I don't see you being an artist or like being the main attraction. You don't have that it factor. I see you being this. And then he proceeds to tell me what he sees me doing. 
But I'm only telling you this because what would it look like for you to want to be an artist and work for an artist? And I was like, "Mm." because I didn't trust myself. I didn't trust my ability already. I was just kind of like, I mean, I guess. And I never went back to the studio. I never finished recording that song. I stopped all creative processes that I had going on. I was working with a vocal coach literally every week. Um, Like I said, writing my own songs, working with a vocal coach. I had a producer I was working with. I was in there like swimwear. And I allowed someone's words to knock me off. And I stopped. And for almost a year and a half, I never wrote a song again. I never tried to sing again other than like in the shower or along to the radio. I never did any of that. And now I here I am a month away from 26 and I'm trying to get back. And now I've started this podcast on my own terms, trusting myself and what God has called me to do. And I want other people to walk out the same life that I am now walking out. So at least let this be a taught lesson. Don't settle your life trying to navigate somebody else's blueprint. And don't settle your life by listening to what somebody else has to say. That's why what I mean by making sure that your accountability partner is really who God has ordained to be your accountability partner. So they know when you need to be pushed and when you need to be comforted and when you need to be reassured. So yeah, that's how I um, realized that I was settling for a life. (laughs) Um... Thank you for tuning in to Quartz Country. I hope today was something insightful. I really didn't know where I was going because gee whiz, life has been life in. It's been throwing some punches at me, um, but we're still here. So again, like I said, subscribe to our YouTube channel, share our videos. um, Let me know how you're liking it. Let me know what you would like um, to hear me speak about. Let me know if you want to be on here and you, you know, you got a story to tell and you want to chop it up with me. Let me know all of the things. Um, Rate us. Is that what it's called? Like, give us five stars on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Um, Give us a thumbs up on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram. Share all the things that are on the Instagram and all of the things. Um, I love y'all so much. That's something that will never change because that's what I want to show in life is that love abounds through every season through every hiccup through every wrongdoing love still abounds so i love you i really do and like always the more you know the more you grow and the more you realize the more you can impact lives and i'm your host courtney elise see you next time love y'all